Hey, this is Matt once again. What about you in the videos? The paid request this time from Rapid Kirby 3K. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the film Lost in Space, the 1998 movie, which I know there are fans of the film. Some view it as a guilty pleasure, some just like it. I'm not one of those. I'm sorry, I just don't think this is a good film. It does have merit. It's not the worst movie ever or the worst sci-fi film ever. But this is from a guy that did not even grow up with the TV show. I don't know squat about the TV show other than you know Dr. Smith and his alliterations. And the way he talked. Yeah. And you have the little kid, Will, Danger Will, Will Robinson, Danger, you know, that phrase from Robot. Well, I know of the show, but at the same time, I still don't know much of the show. I know June Lockhart was in it, and the bare essentials I know about it. So it's not like, oh, it's not like the show. Which, if people are mad about that, I perfectly understand as well. Now, it's directed by Stephen Hopkins. Now, I like him as a director. He did Predator 2, which is a favorite of mine. He did Judgment Night with Emilio Estevez, which is a very underrated film. He also did Elm Street 5, which is my least favorite of the, the first seven movies. My least favorite is Part 5. And... I don't know if he was the right director for this. When you look at his previous films... I don't really see family film being in his vocabulary. Has he never really done one like that before? This is supposed to be Swiss Family Robinson in space. That's what Lost in Space is. They're on a journey to help humanity. Something goes wrong. They're lost in space. Just like the family that was lost on an island. And they had to figure out how to survive and get out of their situation. And I'll okay, to read the sub so I'm not mumbling through it. 2058, Earth will be uninhabitable due to the irreversible effects of pollution and ozone depletion. In an effort to save humanity, the United Global Space Force sends Professor John Robinson, played by William Hurt, may he rest in peace. I enjoyed him in Altered States. He was the general in Incredible Hulk and some of the other Marvel films. His wife, Maureen, played by Mimi Rogers. His daughters, Judy and Penny. One of them is played by Heather Graham. This is around the time she was doing uh, that film, Booty Nights. And a young prodigy son, Will, on the spaceship Jupiter 2. And they're on the journey to complete destruction of a hypergate over the planet Alpha Prime, which will allow the population of Earth to be instantly transported and populate the new planet. So, the Earth is dying. Too much po pollution. We need to find a new planet. We got it. But the journey there would take so long. We, we're building a date. We build a date here. People can boom. Go right there in a split second. But we need to get over there. So that. William Hurt can tell him. The exact details to make this a reality. So with that said. Gary Oldman plays Dr. Smith and he's hired by the bad guys to screw this up. Now granted, Dr. Smith's doing this for a chunk of change and I'm like, what are you going to do? And, like, how are you going to spend that money if the earth is dying? And where are you going to go? Are you, I would assume he's going to go to what, their planet? The bad guy's planet? Or who else's planet? Like, you didn't have all the money you want, but if you don't have a plan to live on to spend it, what's the point? But, I don't know. Ask Dr. Smith, don't ask me. So, Gary Oldman, he's going to sabotage by making the robot go crazy when the ship launches. But then Gary Oldman gets screwed over by the bad guys and he's left there. And then the pilot is played by Matt LeBlanc. From the TV show Friends. Yep, Joey. This is when he was trying to be a movie star. Where he had films like Ed. 
with the the monkey that was obviously not a monkey being a baseball pitcher among other stuff and Matt LeBlanc I've heard he's not really a nice guy in real life I don't mind him as an actor I could see you know, people picking his performance apart but I didn't mind him in the movie I didn't mind him in the film I liked him in the film he's one of the few things I liked about it he's you know trying to be the action hero guy I liked his helmet that pops up like it's Isaac Clarke from Dead Space Sally only uses it once in the movie but yeah he's the, the pilot and we even see him at the very beginning of the film during this battle this battle's happening I think one of my cats had a stroke because they're hearing me listen to this film if you heard something you're like Ugh. yeah I think sorry I, I know I'm talking about Lost in Space it's not that bad of a movie but I mean it's I don't think it's a good movie So, it won't take too long so that the cat don't die. But, Matt LeBlanc saves a fellow pilot during this battle. And the special effects are there. I mean, some of them, like the spaceship Jupiter 2, are fairly good. And, you know, the action scenes with the explosions. And, for 1998, I think they're fine for the time it was made in. If the same stuff was made and it was 2018, I'd be a bit more critical. Some of it, though, the effects are pretty dodgy and they do not age well. There's a bit where you see a cityscape. It's not the best looking CG. There's other aspects, like there's a creature named Blarp, which I guess on the show was an actual chimpanzee that they put a wig on. Here it's a CGI creature that can change colors like camouflage itself to the environment and you know, moves like a monkey but it's a CGI alien thing then there's another creature there's like a spiral like there's these spiders that CGI does not age well at all so that's really bad CG the blarps that like there's some pretty bad dated CGI in it but the stuff with the ship Jupiter 2 that stuff's pretty decent I like the look of Jupiter 2. I like the design of it. I think it's sleek. It's slick enough. It's sleek enough. The the set of the interiors, pretty nicely done. You know, they try and go for, I don't want to say, well, I guess compared to the show, an edgier look. But I thought they worked well for what the proceedings needed to be. The interiors, the set design. I think what hurts the film is number one, it's rather boring except one section. And number two, the, the characters are really bland and really boring to watch, these characters. And that hurts the film a lot. Especially for a film that was being set up for a potential for a franchise where you had it's supposed to be three movies and... There's supposed to be like all this merchandise and all this other stuff going to happen. There's going to be cartoons. And they really wanted to relaunch this franchise to be a to be a franchise. But this film bombed. It petered out. And you get why. Because pretty much what they did was they took three episodes of the show and they jammed them together. So it doesn't feel like one cohesive movie. It feels like three separate episodes kind of loosely fit together so you have the first part the introduction of the family dr smith screwing things up having to stop the rampaging robot which i like the look of the robot it's a cool design they have updated design of the robot and they got the same voice who voiced the robot in the show And then they catch Dr. Smith. They're ready to go into the sun. They got to hit the hyperdrive. 
They know if they do, they'll be lost in space. But if they don't, they're going to die. And that stuff, again, the introduction of the family, I don't care about this family. Like, the one I didn't mind was Matt LeBlanc. I mean, if the movie's about him and him alone, maybe I'd be more for it. And I was people like, what? It's like, yeah, that was really the one I liked. William Hurt, he's a good actor. He was a good actor. He did not fit in this at all. He was completely miscast. He felt s bored. He looked sleepy. He looked like he was ready to fall asleep in certain scenes. You, either he knew it or he was not that well directed. Hey, I'm, I'm just kind of doing this scene here. And, uh, yeah, I'm in this sci-fi thing. And I'm the, I'm the doctor. You know, I'm the, I'm the Professor John. And, yeah, I'm trying to do these scenes here. I... <laughs> Recipes of William Hurt, but this is the worst performance I've seen him do. This is the worst performance I've seen the guy do. Sleep-inducing, tires, bored. Mimi Rogers doesn't really have much to do other than have a few arguments with William Hurt. A few little snappy moments between her and Dr. Smith. Not a whole lot for her to do. Judy and Penny. Heather Graham. Pretty much going back and forth with Matt LeBlanc. These sort of flirtatious but non-flirtatious but come get me but don't get me kind of dialogue. Was It, it wasn't the most well written by Tiva Goldsman. You know the writer of Batman and Robin. <laughs> And then the other girl, which I forget her, Lacey someone, the actress. Her voice sounded like a damn cartoon character. Like one of the chipmunks. Whiny, high-pitched. She sounded like an actual cartoon character. I was ready for the scene. Trees, 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 time is here. Irritated the hell out of me. Irritates it. And the little boy Will wasn't much better. He also had a bit of a whiny voice, and I don't think he was that good of a kid actor. He wasn't the worst. Don't even remember, he wasn't the worst, but he pretty much had like one emotion, and we're supposed to forgive it because he's a kid actor, but like he had like one look on his face the whole time. Right from the go, California. I mean, at least the kid in the wizard, the, the Nintendo movie, at least he had a reason to be that way. But, I mean, he's not as bad as making him sound, but he just, I don't think he was great either. And Gary Oldman, he's trying to be the villain. You know, he is the villain. But it's like, he didn't know if he wanted to be the funny villain or the sinister villain. So he wasn't like, if it was funny villain, I think the fifth element did that much better. Like he was the, the used car salesman type of terror, villain in the fifth element. I think that was a funnier villain. If you were more intense villain, Air Force One, even Leon the Professional, everyone. So there's other movies that he did a better sinister villain, and there's movies he did a better, funnier villain. This felt like he couldn't, he wants to do a bit of Dr. Smith from the show, but he can't because that'd be too campy. So he's trying to be sinister, but at the same time, he doesn't come off as sinister, doesn't come off as intimidating, doesn't come off as funny. So he's a good actor, but kind of caught in between this realm of which direction is he supposed to go in, and I don't know. And that's like the, the first bit ends with they go use the hyperspace, the hyperdrive. You have an early use of bullet time, although a very bad looking bullet time. Where like they freeze and the camera turns as they're frozen. You think like a year later you had the Matrix. And you see how much better that looks. Even for 99, 
compared to this movie, you know, I think this had a bigger budget. I could be wrong on that than The Matrix. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the same budget. But you look at the two and you see like The Matrix ages fairly well. And this just doesn't. Again, I hate to say like Stephen Hopkins, like he didn't do family films and he didn't do a lot of space films. I mean, Predator 2 has an alien, but that was in the city and he worked well there. Like he did in Judgment Night. Acha film takes place in the city, Steve. That seems like his de facto comfort zone. This, not really. Now the second section, which I didn't mind, the I didn't mind. I minded the least. I'll put it that way. They find a ship. It seems like one of their own, but it's also looking different. And they realize, really, that they're in the future, or something, because that's Battle of Blanc's buddy, and it's like they've been gone for years, even though they've only been gone a day. But I don't think they really mention that they're in the future. But I think that was supposed to be the plan for the sequel is that they get back to all Alpha Prime but they realize they're in the future and there's other stuff going on and that's where they have to probably use Will's time travel to go back and by the, the third film of this trilogy that never happened. But that's such I didn't mind just because it was a little bit of an action creature feature where they're in the ship and there's these spiders coming out of the woodwork and the little boys using the robot to shoot the creatures and Matt LeBlanc gets the, the metal plate like he's Isaac Clark is shooting the the alien spiders don't look good the really poor like PlayStation 1 graphics but at least you know there's some creature feature action I'm a sucker for creature feature action I grew up with Predator, Predator 2, Aliens the Relic, Deep Rising, the Blah remake, you know, a lot of creature feature stuff. So I'm a sucker for it, especially when you put a little bit of action, or in this case, a little bit of gunplay. Liking Matt LeBlanc, and he's kind of the center stage of that part, as well as the cool looking design of the robot when he's shooting at these things. I didn't mind the idea of the boy being on the ship and using the hologram thing to kind of control it. Like a video game. I didn't know how I felt about the comedy of, you have the voice from the old show as the voice of the robot, but the kid's controlling him, so what the kid says, the robot mimics. So like it bumps something, you see, you hear the robot go, oops, sorry, or mom says, get the hell out of there. I, I don't know how I felt about that, that was a bit weird I know why the robot's saying that but to hear that voice saying those lines I thought that was just a bit cr eh, cringy what the fuck is that word cringy not cringely what the fuck is cringely it's a word I made up I guess at least it's less a movie than these three episodes stitched together and then the least interesting one is how it ends because they blow up the the, the ship, they crash land and the rest of it is just a really boring, uninteresting story. I get the possibility of the appeal but I'm like, we already have this element of being lost in space where you do all these different things environments, locations creatures, like monsters all the stuff for adventure and excitement and instead most of family, like Judy Penny, the mom they don't really do anything but stay on the ship. Matt LeBlanc is not the hell out. And dragged. Or tarried. And. William Hurt. Goes on to find an older Will. Because this 
part of the planet is in some time frame where he thought William Hurt never came back, but then I guess he realizes, well, it should be his realization, well, wait a minute, you didn't abandon me. You were in here, so you were in here the whole time. So this bit where William Hurt's gone, but on the other side, so many years passed. I don't know what the hell the deal is. And for the older Will, uh, Will, his family died. So it was just him and Dr. Smith. And spoilers, by this point, Dr. Smith was attacked by one of the spiders. So he turned to a Smith spider thing, which looked really shitty. Like that was one of the worst uh, effects was the Smith spider <coughs> to the point making my throat close up. Like Terry Oldman is this shitty looking CG spider thing that's talking. Why? Why? And then this the older Will sees that William Hurts there, and he's like, "I'm gonna make this plan." to go back in time and stop the mission from happening. But then I'm sitting there going, well, wait a minute. Like, you see William Hurts there, and you could go like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and see that the rest of the family's alive that's outside of this bubble of this time thing. So now you know that, no, your dad didn't abandon you. And the family's still alive in that bubble over there. Like, all you have to do is go to the bubble and go, here you go. You can leave now. When you leave now, things will be okay. I mean, he could do that. He's even Matt LeBlanc sees the device like, if we take that, would you put it in the ship and leave? Like, he sees, oh, wait, you're alive? Wait, you were here the whole time? Wait, the other family's alive? Oh, here's a way to save you. Take this thing here, put it in the ship, and goodbye. I saved the family. But he doesn't seem to think that way. Now, if he became, like, a bad guy, like, crazy, but no. He just add him in to follow his plan. Is Dr. Smith, I just told him. And Dr. Smith is a spider creature and just wants to use it to bring its spiders to Earth. And the whole bit with, again, the Dr. Smith being a spider CGI, it just looked clunky, it looked awkward, it looked laughable. And just the stuff just wasn't exciting because I didn't care about the family, so I didn't care about the family dynamic, I didn't care about the f potential emotion. Also, it didn't help that you got, was it Jared Harris? He's an actor who's been a lot of other stuff. And they dubbed his lines. Because I guess he wasn't American enough sounding. And I'm like, well, why did you hire him in the first place? If if you knew he had this accent, isn't that what you do in auditions? And so when he's dubbed, he just, it looks awkward to you go... That voice doesn't sound natural to this body. And then the kid in the show, Lost in Space, well, the original, Bill Mooney, Mooney, I forget his name. He wanted to do it, and they said, no, the audience, they would be a bit confused. Like, they, it would take them out. I'm like, why would it take them out? Let's, a lot of people would not know who that was. And the few people they did, they go, oh, okay, that's cool. He's playing the older Will, that's cool. Like, it would have been fine. In fact, it would have been better. Because you wouldn't have to replace the voice. But hey, they did it anyway. The kid from the original show wanted to do it. They told him, no, fuck off. They did another actor, and then they dub his voice in, so it just sounds awkward. And like William Hurt, he still sounds sleepy. He needed a pillow. He needed a pillow. William Hurt looked like he was ready to go to take a nap at any point in this movie. Again, like you turn Smith into a CGI creature, look ridiculous. 
the young Will sees a robot and is telling this story about friendship. That, and then the robot helps. Which well, doesn't the robot get destroyed anyway? Instead of joining them? Or, I don't think the robot helps them, I don't think. So, if they did a sequel, are, are we led to believe that he would build a robot like that on the ship? Did you know they'd want the robot back? I don't know. Because the, the Rebel robot looks like the robot from the show. But, I mean, to see how popular that robot was on the show, he's not featured a lot in this. He's pretty much featured a little bit as a... Trying to kill the family. A little bit to shoot the spires. But Will's controlling it. And then the little bit of the robot people knew. That things for itself. You see for a teeny bit at the end. And then really not much after that. So if you want to see more of that character. And also I remember the show was a lot of like Dr. Smith and the boy. Kind of either having to deal with each other. And you only get a little bit of that in this. And like the, the whole third act really, I might not have been big on it in the first two thirds of it, but the, the third act was just fucking boring. Fucking boring. And super spoilers, shoot the Smith Spider thing. It's young, eats their own, so the Spires eat the CG Smith. The family has to go on this ship, but it's too late. They get blown up. And William Hurt sees this. So the older Will says, here, go back in time. Now, as someone would say, why don't you go back in time to before the ship was sabotaged? So that you... But, I mean, they did say, William Hurt says, what if this thing affects Earth the same way it did this planet? But he did send William Hurt to the ship, and they didn't affect the ship. But, I don't know. Maybe he did an extra precaution. So, he sends William Hurt back. Worm, William Hurt's able to tell him what he needs to tell him so that they don't die. They drive through the planet. They go on their merry way, escape, and then you get the, you, if you have epilepsy, do not watch the end credits. It is absolutely flashy. Epilepsy, seizure, that's a serious matter. I do mean that. And you will have a, a epilepsy, seizure type of conundrum. Because it's like all these flashing images. And then... It's trying to do the Lawson based theme, but in its very of the time way. And it's like throwing like little clips of dialogue from the movie, and it's really not a good version to listen to, to be honest. In the musical store, I don't really remember much about it, honestly. It just, you know, around the same time, you had, like, The Fifth Element, so much of a better science fiction film. Like, think about it. Before this, you had The Fifth Element. After this, you got The Matrix. Around this time, you got Dark City, much better sci-fi movie. And just, this came off as, it didn't have any of the, it didn't have much creativity in terms of its story. There wasn't like, wow, that's a great new image that I haven't seen before. The, the family dynamics were su superficial at best. What an annoying, bratty, penny vision. Giving her, this is like tit top before fucking tit tock. Filming herself. Like the original tit tot's tit tac toe. 
Tit Tot Star with a cartoon whiny voice. Will, he's a smart kid that no one pays attention to, but he's to help save the day. William Hurt looking for a pillow. Matt LeBlanc trying to be the action star. Uh, he's he's still he's rough around the edges, but I can see, I can see room for improvement. But I think you know he was some someone I could grasp. Maybe because it's just the type of typical action hero character he was playing. I'm a sucker for that type. So yeah, I did my Matt LeBlanc. And even like the action scenes, I'm like, okay. The opening spacecraft scene. Typical. I mean, this is around time. A year later, you see Wing Commander. I mean, kind of that meh space action sequence. Nothing unique or incredibly different from the rest. And a story that just wasn't that strong of a story. For a feature length film. For a first adventure. I think it was too early to do the time travel thing. I think they should have really furthered in on this. This creature feature stuff. And. Maybe. I don't know. More unique. Planets. To really get the. Visual juices flowing. But. Or like more unique plot. More unique ideas. But it just didn't have it in this, at least to me. So, if you liked it, cool. It's not for me. With that said, thanks for watching. This was a bomb when it came out. It was a, a bomb. And I can see why. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.